Hello everyone, welcome to the science stuff. Today, we are going to be learning about the different agents of cross-pollination. Hope you learn something new. Before we go into the agents of cross-pollination, first let's discuss the definitions of pollination and cross-pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from a male part of a plant to a female part of a plant, later enabling fertilization. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anthers of the flower of one plant to the stigma of another plant of the same species. Here, we can see an example of cross-pollination where the pollen stick to the bee's body and later, when the bee starts to drink the nectar from another flower, it sticks on to the stigma. Hence, this shows cross-pollination. Now, let's look at the different agents of cross-pollination. First, let's look at insect pollination. It is also called entomophily where entomon means insect and phil means affinity. This is a type of cross-pollination where the pollen is distributed by the insects. Some insects that pollinate are bees, as you can see here, butterflies, beetles, mosquitoes, and more. Under entomophily is myrmecophily which is when ants are the agents of pollination. Now, let's look at the features of entomophilus flowers. The flowers are large and brightly colored. They usually produce nectar and emit a scent to attract insects. The pollen grains are sticky and the stigma generally doesn't hang out from the flower. The flowers tend to be in clusters to make them stand out, especially in cases where individual flowers are small. Examples are jasmine, as you can see here, rose, marigold, and many more. Now, let's look at wind pollination. It is also called anemophily, where animo means wind and feel means affinity. It is a type of cross-pollination where the pollen grains are distributed by the wind. Now, let's look at the different features of anemophilous flowers. The flowers are small, as you can see in this picture of a Peruvian feather grass, and they are usually not brightly colored and often dull green. They do not produce scent or nectar. The stamens are long and hang out. The anthers are large and loosely attached to the filaments so that the slightest wind can move them. They are called versatile anthers. Pollen is produced in large amounts and they are smooth light and dry so that the wind can easily carry them. The stigmas are feathery and hang out of the flower as you can see in this picture. Some examples are the maize plant and many other grasses as we already saw the Peruvian feather grass and the pine flower from the previous slide. Another example is the pistachio flower and here we can also see that the color is dull and it's a slight greenish color. Now let's look at water pollination. It is also called hydrophily where hydro means water and phila means affinity and it is a type of cross pollination where the pollen grains are distributed by the water. Here we have a picture of zostera or eelgrass 
which undergoes water pollination. Now, let's look at the features of hydrophilus flowers. The pollen grains are produced in large numbers. In some plants, the pollen grains have a specific gravity almost equal to that of the water, so they remain floating below the surface of water. In some special cases, the male flower float on the surface of the water till they meet the female flowers. An example is Vallisneria. Here, we can see a female Vallisneria flower surrounded by some male Vallisneria flowers. And here, we can see that the female flower is attached to the female plant while the male flower detaches from the plant and starts floating up to the water level so that the pollen can fall onto the stigma of the female flower. Other examples of hydrophilus plants are cone tail and hydralia. Now let's look at what zoophily is. Zoophily is a form of pollination where the pollen is transferred by animals. So hence, insect pollination is also under zoophily. Now let's look at some other types of zoophily. Now let's look at ornithophily. This is the type of cross-pollination where the pollination occurs through the birds. Ornitho means bird and feel, as you already know, means affinity. Here, the flowers are brightly colored to attract the birds and produce abundant amounts of nectar. The pollen grains are produced in large amounts and the floral parts are leathery. Examples are Bignonia and Canna. Here, we have a hummingbird drinking the nectar from a bignonia flower. Now, let's look at Chiropterophily. Chiropterophily is the pollination of plants by bats. Examples are Adansonia and Kaijalia. Now, let's look at Elephophily. It is a type of pollination where the elephants are the agents. An example of a flower pollinated by elephants is Rafflesia. But you should know that Rafflesia is not only pollinated by elephants, it's also pollinated by other insects. Now, let's look at Malacophily. Pollination of flowers by slugs and snails is called malacophily. An example of a flower pollinated by slugs and snails is lemna. Now, let's look at a fun fact. Did you know that some aquatic plants like sea grasses are pollinated by crustaceans? And in Africa, giraffes serve as pollinators for the acacia trees that have blossoms high up. Now we have come towards the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe and comment down below on the topic you would like me to do next. And you're watching The Science Stuff.